and welcome to the last video in the group stretch series. In this class, we're going to be using all of the tools that we've learned so far. We're going to begin by playing with some foam roller and self-release techniques. Then we're going to move into some resist relax work with a strap. And last, we'll be using a bolster to uh, allow gravity to naturally do the work of a restorative pose for us. So to begin, I'd like us to place one hand over our belly and the other hand over our heart. It doesn't matter which hand. Deepen your breath and notice the quality of your breath against your hands. How fast or slow is it? Does it have a tone? What about your heartbeat? Is it erratic? Is it slow and purposeful? Check in. This whole practice is a practice of interoception, of listening to the sounds inside one's body, of listening to what the body needs at any given moment. Now place your hands behind your head. Wrap your elbows forward. Lift your chin slightly and press your head back into your hands and your hands inside your head. So now you're creating a tensegrity of head and hands. Direct your breath into the right side of your body, spreading the right side of your body as if it had gills. On your next inhale, breathe into the left side of your body, through the left ribs. Now breathe into the space behind your heart, like a sail, like you're pressing backward into your spine with your lungs. And exhale. Notice how you can use your breath to expand into different areas in your body, how you can stretch yourself from the inside out with your breath alone. Now, keeping our, hand, our hands behind our head, we're gonna create a soft undulating motion. Just beginning with the head alone. I'm gonna call this the Stevie Wonder. Let this undulation travel down your spine. So now we're moving the chest the upper ribs, all the way down into the mid-back and lower ribs. Even the pelvis is starting to come along for the ride a little bit. Using your breath to explore new areas, new capacities of movement. When you're done playing, come back to center. And we're going to begin rotating our rib cage around in a gentle circle, a gentle arc. I call this scraping the peanut butter out of the jar. Pause in those spots where you really got to get the peanut butter out. Breathe right into them. Uh, and then keep up that uh, juicy circular motion with the ribs. This is the kind of curious, conscious, creative movement we're going to use throughout this class. Return to these tools at any time using your breath to create space and lift, creating cr very curious and conscious movement anytime you want to expand from the inside out in new and inventive ways. So now we're gonna uh, take a seat off of our block and you can put your block aside. Turn to face your foam roller. We're gonna begin in a, a child's pose with our knees out wide and our feet together back behind us. Walk your hands forward until they're on top of your foam roller. Now press the foam roller away until your forehead descends down to the mat. Play with pressing that foam roller away or pulling it toward you. You might play with some undulations of the spine or with getting the peanut butter off of the jar, just feeling for those areas that really need the movement. Send breath there. Sometimes stillness is just as important as the dance. So whenever you find a good spot that just needs a little more rest, be with it there, be still, send it breath. Roll yourself back up to a seat. Angle your foam roller toward the left upper corner of the mat, a 45 degree angle, keeping your hips right at neutral, right at center. Press that foam roller away from you. 
Here you might play with dipping your right shoulder down, looking underneath the left shoulder, twisting the spine toward the left, all the way from pelvis to head, spiraling open toward the left. Now I feel a deep stretch in my right side body. Or you might play with dipping that left shoulder down, right shoulder high. Now I'm feeling a little bit more of a stretch on the left side, in the upper shoulder. Still pushing and pulling, undulating and creating circles of the ribs as much as I need to, to find opening and space. Slowly roll that bolster all the way back to center and angle it now toward the upper right hand corner of your mat. Press your foam roller away. Sit your hips down, anchor through your hips so that your upper body can rise up and out of them. Drop your right ear toward the mat. Look underneath your left shoulder here. Breathe space into the left shoulder and left side body. Dip the left shoulder down. Look underneath the right side. Push and pull right to left. Send breath. Roll the roller all the way back to center, perpendicular to the mat like a T. Now I'm going to sit down away from my foam roller. And I'm going to sit back until the foam roller is about in the middle of my, my spine. Now I can rest my mid back over the roller. And I'm going to begin just with a gentle extension, holding my head with my hands, slowly lowering my head back to the earth. This might be a, a little bit much at first, so maybe I just want to hang out here, using my breath to allow me to descend a little bit closer toward the mat with each exhale. Just a gentle heart opener. Maybe you want to rest your arms overhead here for just a moment. Breathe space into the back body, right where it rests over the foam roller, right behind the heart space. Hold your head with your hands again. Wrap your elbows in the air. Plant your feet, lift your hips. Roll your spine all the way from the top of the spine down to the bottom of the rib cage, nice and slow, feeling for stuck spots that might need a little extra time and breath. I'm digging and dragging my heels toward me, and then I'm pushing them away to create rolling oh, of the foam roller behind me. And even begin to lift my head slightly or arc it a little bit over the right or the left. Small movements here, nice and slow and purposeful. Again, listening to the sounds inside our body, listening to what our bodies need. Spread your elbows out wide, east to west. Drop your right ear toward right shoulder, right elbow toward right hip. Pull left elbow back toward the mat, opening the left shoulder as you roll the left side of the rib cage. Pushing and pulling with your feet against the mat. Sending breath right to the foam roller. Pausing in areas that feel stuck or sensitive. Sending in breath. We're aiming for a 7 out of 10 in sensitivity here. So if you're going over that, you might want to ask yourself if this is a productive kind of pain. Return to neutral and drop your left ear towards your left shoulder, left elbow toward left hip, widening that right elbow back toward the mat and roll the right side body here. There's a, a word that we use in pain science called nocebo that describes the effect of thinking that pain is good for you. And while we're aiming for a slight discomfort so that we can work through it and gain more stretch tolerance. We're not aiming for pain here. 
So instead of asking yourself which stretch gives you the deepest access to your body, ask which stretch gives you the deepest access to your awareness of what your body needs. Slowly return to center. Let's keep the elbows wide and work our way down our back one more time. Neutralizing the spine. And then all the way back up to center. Great. Drop your hips. Sit all the way up. And now we're going to take our foam roller underneath our knees. I'm also going to grab my bolster. For a long time, we were doing these lower body stretches back on our elbows, but we realized that took a lot of upper body strength and could potentially uh, not be sustainable for a lot of people. So instead, we're now using a bolster behind our back body. It gives us a, a little more support for our elbows and a little bit more height to work from. So now you can plant your elbows right back here, and now you've got a, a gentle little perch. So I'm going to roll my foam roller down toward my calves. And I'm going to begin toward the bottom of my calf, toward my ankles. Bus stop number one. I'm going to lift my hips, and I'm going to roll my calves from ankle to the back of the knee, avoiding direct pressure over the Achilles and directly over the back of the knee, but we're getting pretty close to it. If you can't reach all the way to the top of your calves, you might want to do this in two different strips where you can roll the foam roller back with one foot and then angle a little bit more toward the tops of the calves. If this is still a little bit too much on your upper body, you might just find a, a good sensitive spot and then drop your hips there and then just play with rotating from right to left over that spot or just sending breath to it as you give yourself some ankle circles. Now, if this is not quite enough for you, you might cross your ankles. And then with your ankles crossed, lift your hips. And now you can use your top leg to invite more pressure to the lower leg. Swinging your hips from left to right to find the good juicy bits that need a little bit more time and attention. Send them breath. You might even give them a few ankle circles here. Switch legs. Whatever bus stop felt good for you on your left leg, try on your right. And you might have two different bus stops here, no problem. This one might be, uh, might require a little more or less pressure. Listen to what your body needs. After a few rolls of the calf here, sit your hips down. Roll your foam roller up towards your hamstrings. I'm going to begin right at about mid hamstring here. Lift your hips again, and we can begin rolling all the way from sits bones to knees. This might be enough. Or bust up two. Same thing as with the calves. You can cross your feet, swing your hips from left to right. Or bus stop number three. We've been calling this one the ham sandwich. I'm going to plant my hips. I'm going to put the sole of my foot on top of my quad with my knee lifted high. Now I can use my foot to traction my thigh down into the foam roller. So go ahead and try that here, even without lifting your hips. You should already feel uh, a nice bit of pressure and release on the back of your leg, especially if you let it swing from left to right here. When you're ready, you can lift your hips up, use your foot to press your quadricep, I'm sorry, to press your quadricep down and begin to roll along the hamstring. Again, using the hips, swinging them from left to right to target that foam roller. A lot of times that biceps femoris on the lateral side gets pretty tight, so we might want to spend a little more time there. And then if you start to get tired, you can just drop, rotate that foot from right to left. We're going to do the same for the right side. So you can begin with, with both knees together. 
or you can try crossing at the ankle. You could even, if you like, just drop one foot and begin working one leg at a time. And then the final bus, bus stop is the sole of your foot over your white right quad, pressing that hamstring down into the foam roller. Maybe giving yourself a few ankle circles here as well. Drop your hips, bend your knees. Now, I'm going to work on my outer hip. So I'm gonna come up to a little bit more of a seat and I'm gonna put my hands back behind me on the foam roller. Now I can lift myself up on the bolster and I can put the foam roller underneath my sits bones. So now I'm balanced on my tailbone over the foam roller. From here, I'm gonna cross my right ankle over my left knee to create a figure four. I'm gonna roll my body toward the right, my both knees over the right, drop down on that right elbow, and then hold on to the top of the right foot. I'm gonna begin rolling the right outer hip here. Looking for those lateral hip rotators, all the way up into lateral gluteus medius, the outer fibers there. Once I find something sensitive, something that I wanna work with, I'm gonna begin doing something I call the contract relax method. Hold there, hold in that sticky spot that needs more space. On your inhale, press the top of your foot into your hand. You should feel that area light up, fire up. And on the exhale, you're gonna relax and you'll roll the right outer hip. I'm rolling all the way from the side of the sacrum down to the greater trochanter of the femur. We're gonna do that again. Inhale, side of the foot, top of the foot, into the hand. Exhale, relax and roll. Should feel like it's getting a little easier and a little less sensitive each time you do it. Inhale, top of the foot into the hand, side of the foot into the hand. Exhale and roll. Again, swinging those knees down toward the ground to find a different ankle angle. All right, slowly return to center, plant both feet. Left elbow comes back. We're going to prop ourselves back up on our hands. Left knee over right knee. Now we can angle our knees over toward this left hand side. Drop back down toward the left elbow, right hand on top of the foot and begin to roll. Playing with the angle of the outer hip, searching for those areas of sensitivity. Once you find something good, hold it there. We're gonna play with the resist relax method. Inhale, press the top of the foot into your hand. Exhale, relax and roll. Inhale, top of the foot into the hand. Exhale, roll. Inhale, top of the foot into the hand. Exhale, let it go. Roll all the way from the side of the sacrum down to the greater trochanter. And return to center. And then put both hands back behind you. And now we're going to actually sit back onto the bolster Roll this underneath our knees. Now we can sit at the space between. And I'm gonna put the bolster away for a moment here so that we can do some hip flexor work. Now with this underneath our knees, I'm gonna rest all the way back on my back. Lift your hips and pull that foam roller up towards your sacrum. So now I've got a little more extension available to me in my hip flexors. I want my foam roller not to be underneath my lower back but right underneath the sacrum itself. Now pull your right knee in towards your face. Naturally, my pelvis is counter-mutating. It is, um, it is curl tucking inward. When I extend that leg out long, it mutates the pelvis, pulling it back, creating more opening now in my left hip flexor. 
I can even use the heel of my hand to find the ASIS, and I can, I can uh, hook the fascia just below the ASIS with the heel of my hand um, so that I'm, I'm stretching the rectus femoris. Or I can uh, start playing with my fingertips just uh, on the inside lip of the ASIS, starting to feel for the psoas, the iliacus. If I work my way in from the pelvic bowl, just a couple inches toward the belly button, upward at a diagonal, I can start to find the psoas. If I'm, if I'm curious about where it is, all I have to do is lift that bottom leg and I'll feel it fire. So play with self-massage or not here. Um, both ways are good ways to stretch the psoas. On the inhale, we're going to pull the knee toward the nose. Naturally, you'll see this uh, left leg begin to rise off the earth. On the exhale, keep the knee at the nose and stretch your toes, your left toes down toward the mat. I'm even pressing my rectus femoris away, my ASIS away. Inhale, right knee toward nose. Exhale, relax, left toes down toward the mat. One more time, inhale. Exhale and stretch. Now let that right knee splay out wide. We're gonna stretch the adductors. This is bus stop number one. So this may be plenty for you. Keep your knee bent and you would inhale, pressing your knee up toward the ceiling. Exhale, you'd relax and let that knee naturally find its new range of motion down toward the mat. Always keeping your hand at the inseam of the knee for a little resistance, or if it's too much, you can place your hand underneath the knee. Now, keep your hand underneath the knee. This is bust stop number two as we extend our right leg out long. This might be plenty, in which case all we do is inhale as we lift our leg off of our hand, exhale and relax the leg back into the hand. See if it can descend a little bit closer toward the floor. If this still isn't quite enough, place your hand on the inseam of your right leg. Inhale, resist your leg up against your hand Exhale, follow that adductor stretch with your hand back toward the mat. Sometimes I'll even give myself a little external rotation here. Inhale, inseam of leg up toward the ceiling, wherever you are, inseam comes up. Exhale, relax it back down. Bend the knee, return the knee to neutral toward the ceiling, and now we're gonna plant both feet, give our hips a little shake, over the bolster. Sometimes the back of my sacrum starts to feel like it needs a little more blood flow in between these stretches. And now plant your sacrum again as we pull the left knee in. Hold the left knee and stretch your right leg out long. Now you can do self-massage here as well if you like, feeling for the ASIS, that big hip bone here. Heel of the hand just below ASIS to get the attachment of the rectus femoris, which is also a part of the hip flexion process. Or you can start feeling with the heel of your hand or your fingertips into iliacus, just on the inside rim of that ASIS and pelvic bowl. Or just a little bit closer toward belly button for psoas. If I want to feel it fire, I just bend my knee and pick my knee up toward the ceiling. Wherever I am, I'm going to Inhale and pull my left knee back toward my face. My right toes are naturally gonna rise with my breath. And exhale, keep your knee where it is as you stretch those toes of the right foot back toward the mat, pressing the hip away from you. Inhale, left knee back toward face. Exhale, right toes down toward mat. One more time, inhale, knee toward nose. Exhale, relax. Splay your left knee out wide. Bus stop number one is this bent knee, either with hand on the underside of the knee for more support or over the knee for more resistance. Inhale, knee up toward ceiling. Exhale, relax. Press it back to its next resting place. Bus stop two, extend the leg out straight to the side, hand underneath the outer knee. Inhale, inseam of the leg comes to ceiling. Exhale, the knee descends back to the hand. Bust up number three, hand on the inseam of the left leg. 
Inhale, press left leg up toward the ceiling. Exhale and externally rotate it back toward the mat. You can give yourself a, another assist here by pinning the hip. Inhale, inseam of the leg comes to the ceiling. Exhale, pin at the hip, externally rotate the left leg. Bend the knee. Knee comes back to ceiling. Plant both feet. Get rid of your foam roller. We're going to move on to the strap. Before we do the strap work, I'm going to make sure I keep my lumbar curve by tilting my tailbone down toward the mat so that I can actually place my hands underneath it and feel the space that a little mouse can run underneath the, the lumbar curve of my spine. Now I'm going to grab my strap and I'm going to strap up the ball mounds of my right toes, right underneath the toes. Now you can see as I did that I lost my lumbar curve so I'm going to restore it right now. I'm going to find my strap and I'm going to sit my tailbone back down. You'll notice I just lost a lot more range of motion. That is perfect. That's exactly what we want to do. We want to keep our spine safe. We don't, the goal is not to be limber in all directions. It's to be safe, strong, and flexible. So now I'm going to hold the top of the strap pretty close to my foot and extend my left leg out long. On the inhale, I'm going to press my heel toward the mat. So inhale, drag toward the mat away from me. And on the exhale, I'm going to pull with my arm, my toes back toward my nose. Inhale, heel extends away. Exhale, toes come forward. Make sure you still have your lumbar curve. One more time, inhale. Exhale. Extend back to a resting position. Wrap the strap around the outside of your knee and hold it with your opposite hand. Naturally, this is externally rotating your leg. The more I pull the strap taut, the more my foot is going to flex back toward my nose and my knee is going to rotate out toward my opposite shoulder. Now that I have this external rotation, we're going to descend the foot toward my opposite shoulder so my leg is coming across my body now. Notice. Did your right hip come up off the mat as you descended your right foot across? If so, anchor it back down. Ground your right hip as you pull your toes back towards your left shoulder. Inhale and press the pinky edge side of your right foot away from you toward the right side of the room. Exhale, relax, descend your leg across your body to the opposite shoulder. You can even externally rotate it with your other hand to assist in that external rotation. Inhale, side of the foot toward the right side of the room. Exhale, relax, outward spiral. One more time, inhale. And exhale. Return to center. Unwrap your strap, bend your knee, and switch the strap now to the pinky edge side of your right foot so that your toes, the sole of your foot, start to turn inward. Press your knee out as you pull your knee toward you, toward the left hand side. From here, I'm going to begin finding my range of motion in my hip by moving my whole leg as a, as a unit. Feeling for any stuck spots where it just doesn't want to move. Hold there once you find a good, good spot that needs a little more TLC. Inhale, press the side of your foot up toward the ceiling. Exhale, pull the foot back towards you as you press the knee away, outward spiraling the thigh. Maybe give it a few more circles here. Find your new limit of your range of motion. Inhale, side of the foot up toward the ceiling. Exhale, outward spiral the thigh, inward spiral the calf. One more time, inhale, press side of the foot up toward the ceiling. Exhale, find your new range of motion. Unstrap your right foot. We're gonna do the same work on the opposite side, but first, I want you just to extend your legs and feel the difference between right and left sides. Sometimes it feels like it's a little longer on one side or the other. More than anything, I hope you feel a difference in blood flow and vitality between one side and the other. Now plant both feet, find your lumbar curve once again, strap up your left leg, 
the ball mounds of the toes. Hold with your left hand. Extend your right leg. Make sure you still have that lumbar curve. Inhale, heel toward the mat. Exhale, relax, toes back toward nose. Inhale, heel toward mat. Exhale, toes toward nose. One more time. Inhale, contract that hamstring. Exhale, relax. You can even press up and out through that hamstring. Now we're going to strap outside of the knee, back behind the leg, holding it with the right hand, creating an external rotation here. Descend your heel toward the opposite shoulder. The more I pull on that strap, the more I flex my toes back toward my left shoulder. Holding here with the foot descended toward the right shoulder. Inhale, press your pinky edge side of your foot toward the left side of the room. Exhale, pull the foot back toward the right shoulder, outward spiraling the thigh with your left hand. One more time, inhale, side of the foot toward the left side of the room. Exhale, outward spiral. One more time, inhale. Exhale. Unwind your strap. Strap comes to the pinky edge side of your foot. Pull your foot back toward your right shoulder as you press your knee away from you up toward the ceiling. Find your range of motion here. Pause at any stuck spots. Breathe into them. See if you can send breath even down to your hips. Inhale, press the side of the foot up toward the ceiling. Exhale, foot comes back, knee comes forward. Inhale, foot toward ceiling. Exhale, outward spiral that thigh. Press the knee away. Find your new range, your new arc of motion here. Bend both knees. Plant both feet. We're going to put our strap away and we're going to grab our blocks. We're going to begin with the block on the middle height at its longest, right on this, the highest of its longest side. I'm going to place the block lengthwise underneath my head. And I want the corner of the block to be just at the place where my neck meets my head. This is right in a zone called the suboccipital zone. And the, the bulk of the block is right behind my occiput, behind the, the neck itself, behind the, the head itself. Now the, the work I have to do here is actually to rotate my shoulders back and down and press my shoulders back down toward the mat. Now I feel a really nice stretch in the back of my neck. This is great for people who spend a lot of times, uh, a, lot, a lot of time in seated postures uh, where they get a little too much cervical curve because of uh, the way that they're looking at that computer screen or the way they're, they're driving with their shoulders hunched forward. So now you might do a few figure eights, just feeling that curve of the block against your occiput, feeling for those little stuck spots. Maybe you just roll your head from right to left. Sometimes I even use my hand to give myself a little assistance so that I can nod my head right into the right angle. Once you find it, once you find that spot that needs more space, it might be central, it might be tilted to one side. Wherever you are, inhale, press your head back into the block. Exhale, relax your neck and descend your shoulders down toward the mat as you tuck your chin. Ooh. Inhale, head back into the block. Exhale, relax the shoulders down, let the chin naturally tuck. I'm getting so much length in my cervical spine, my lumbar spine is getting longer too. I'm having to walk it down my mat a little bit. Inhale, press the back of the head into the block. Exhale, relax those shoulders back and down. Raise your right arm overhead, descend it behind you like you're doing a backstroke. Roll off your block toward the right hand side. 
Let your head rest on your arm for just a moment in neutral. Thrust yourself up to a seat. Left knee back, right knee forward. This is quarter pigeon. Take your bolster to the outside of your right hip. Turn your body all the way to the right. Plant your hands on either side of the bolster. Walk your hands so that your belly button is facing the bolster. Now with this already very deep twist, you're going to rest your belly and your chest over the bolster itself. Now turn your head all the way to the left hand side, completing the twist. Rest here with your arms overhead or out to the side, whatever you're feeling is supportive for you. Let gravity naturally do the work of the stretch. Let your breath guide you into deeper and deeper levels of aware relaxation. Simplify your movements. When you're ready, Walk your hands back, press yourself up, unwind at the head first, then the shoulders. Come to a slow seat. Windshield wipe your knees to the other side of the mat. Hoist yourself up on your left hip. Turn your body all the way over to the left. Readjust your bolster so it's on the outside of your left hip. Walk your hands forward, turn your belly button down toward the bolster, rest your right cheek on the bolster so that it's turned all the way to the left hand side. Rest your hands wherever they're comfortable. Again, let gravity do the work here, but use your breath to investigate. Use small movements to create more space and simplify. yourself up to a seat. Turn toward your right, shoulders, then hips, then knees. Rest with your sacrum back against the bolster. Lie all the way back over the bolster now. You can extend your legs out long, or you can extend them out to the sides with knees bent, like butterfly knees. If this is not comfortable for you, but you'd still like to try this posture, you can put two blocks on the outsides of your knees here. Roll your shoulders back. Find some space in your heart. Rest your arms out toward the side like angel wings. You might even play with making a few yoga mat angels here. Pausing at any area that feels like it's stuck and then playing with internal and external rotation by pressing your palms down or palms up. Wherever you are, find a point of stillness. Relax into it, but keep your relaxation aware and conscious. your left knee to right knee, roll off the bolster toward the right hand side. 
pause here. Press yourself up to a seat. Come to a seat on your bolster with your hips high, your knees low, one hand over belly, the other hand over heart. Check in with the quality of your breath, the tone of your heartbeat. Do you notice any differences from before class started? Hands to thighs, and let's take one deep breath together. Big inhale. Open mouth exhale. <sighs> Thank you so much for joining this last video. I'm so happy to have been able to work with you all, and I look forward to seeing you in the studio sometime soon.